were the two? Just outright Complete, lying. Completely outrageous, completely ludicrous censorship. And then BBC said that the audio tape represented discussion of a possible military operation in Syria. Again, completely <laughs> omitting any actual detail. CNN obsessed about how and why the audio tape actually got leaked. They completely failed to mention anything that was actually in it. And the LA Times, again, similar to the BBC, described it as a discussion about, quote, possible military intervention in Syria. They quote some portions of the tape, the LA Times, but completely omit the key sections, which I just read out. And then the Washington Post, again, they actually had the full transcript of the tape, but the actual report written by the Washington Post reporter said that it was about officials mulling, quote, whether to strike or use ground troops against the Islamic State of Iraq and Levant in Syria. So the Washington Post characterized it as the merely discussing how they could attack al-Qaeda in Syria. Again, blacklisting the very core of the story, which is them brazenly planning false flag attacks. They bury the transcription down there. And they know that people are just going to read that summary up at the top. So they can basically spin that in either, any way that they want to. And these others are not even putting it out there. And even though we have the YouTube uh, video available, most people don't speak Turkish, so unless they read the transcript or unless they watch your video, they're not really going to know what this is. And, of course, the people who do speak Turkish in, in Turkey, they can't watch the YouTube video that was put up. So you got this situation where they're totally covering up. This is something, though, that the governments have done over and over again. That's why we keep talking about that. But if you talk about a false flag attack, even though we can provide example after example after example throughout history, where our government has done it, where NATO has done it, you catch them red-handed in Turkey planning it, and people just dismiss you as a conspiracy theorist. It's not a theory. It's an exposition. Well, I mean, the mainstream is desperate to keep this term false flag out of the general body politic. They don't want people, let alone not discussing it, they don't even want them to grasp what it actually means. There's an excellent article we posted out of Washington's blog today on Infowars.com, <clears throat> which lists both Gladio, the CIA in Iran, Israel, numerous other countries openly, brazenly caught committing false flag attacks throughout the last 50 years or so. But the reaction that we saw just even to me, it was shocking. I mean, I'm I'm embedded in this every single day. And even to me, the level of censorship that they had to engage in in order to bury the actual meaning, the core of this story just was just ludicrous, even to my eyes. Uh, USA Today, shockingly, the only mainstream news source that I found, they actually reported the story. They said that it represented top Turkey officials who were plotting to fake an attack against their own country as an excuse to wage war on Turkey. That's a direct quote out of USA Today. That's the first paragraph of their article. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, God knows who, who was working for USA Today, but they, <laughs> they didn't get the memo or the consensus that was handed down amongst all those other mainstream journalists. They may not be working there tomorrow. I think that's the key point that you pointed out. How pervasive this is, how all the major news outlets, the BBC, CNN, New York Times, Washington Post, LA Times, Reuters, AP, they all cover for this. They all cover it up. That's the amazing thing to me is how pervasive it is, how sinister it is. When you look at the transcript and you look at the way they characterize it in their reports, I mean, it's just simply a lie. And they're all doing it. All these mainstream media outlets are doing it, except, as you point out, maybe USA Today. I, I asked the question, I mean, is this merely consensus that they're so ingrained in not asking questions, not acting in an adversarial role to the state, to NATO, that they just self-censor and not talk about the actual core of the story, or if some kind of memo got handed out? The fact that all of them are doing it, apart from USA Today, I mean, I don't know, but, you know, BBC this morning, their top story was still about the missing Malaysia plane. Yeah. I mean, why on earth are people still... Why is that their top story? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's ridiculous. Well, well, it's sensational, but they do not want people looking closely at this. I, I think a good example of this is the Chris Hayes report. You know, we see that, as you pointed out yesterday, MSNBC is in free fall. Their ratings are down 24% over the last measurement from Nielsen. And it's all of the cable news channels are dropping. 
But we had this report where Chris Hayes attacks Dan Bedondi. You know, Dan Bedondi had this confrontation with a state representative about some gun control issues, and he asked him about the constitutionality of it, and the guy just said, F you. And Chris Hayes says, well, that's justifiable because of who it is. No, it's not justifiable. He needs to provide an answer for the constitutionality of, of what he's doing. But see, the F word that they're really afraid of, oh, actually two of them, false flag. They won't use those words. We're going to play that clip from MSNBC in the next segment because Alex is going to be coming on at the top of the hour and he wants to talk about that MSNBC segment with Chris Hayes. But that's really, really the core. That's really the F word that they're afraid of, the two F words false flag. They won't use that. Rachel Maddow might talk about how the FBI has got 150 to nothing record of investigating itself and never finding that they did anything wrong. But she won't talk about false flags with the Boston bombing. We'll be right back with Paul Joseph Watson and coming up is Alex Jones. Stay tuned. One week left to get free shipping on every order over $150 from Emergency Essentials. And that's not all. We have the guaranteed lowest prices anywhere. Like our new Farmer's Market Vegetable Combo that's on sale for 50% off. That's six cans of freeze-dried veggies for only $79.99. Or get Mountain House Pork Chops for 22% off. Call Emergency Essentials at 800-999-1863. Or click BePrepared.com. The choice is clear. Be unprepared or BePrepared.com. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. What I'm about to tell you is based on information obtained from a little-known government document called FT-900. This bombshell government document contains evidence on what I believe will cause the next 9-11. I've just posted a video at www.next911exposed2.com that not only analyzes the contents of this document, but it walks you through the exact timeline of how and when this 9-11 event is scheduled to occur. Just like 9-11 had a lasting impact on our society, this event will reshape America. It will swipe trillions off markets and retirement accounts everywhere and destroy the way of life of millions of unprepared Americans. But it will also trigger what promises to be the biggest wealth transfer in the history of our nation. But you only have a few weeks left to take all the necessary steps to protect yourself and your family. Just visit www.next911exposed2.com to view my newly released video. Again. That's www.next911exposed2.com before it's too late. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gate. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. He's bound to down, loaded up and trucking. Are we going to do what they say can be done? Are we got a long way to go? Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and I'm talking to Paul Joseph Watson about the amazing reaction of the mainstream media worldwide to this false flag leak on YouTube from the Turkish government where they're plotting an attack on their own forces in an area that they claim is theirs so they can start a war with Syria. Now, of course, the term that cannot be brought up by the media under any circumstances is false flag. 
And we've seen how even though Rachel Maddow, we, their ratings are in free fall. She only gets a couple hundred thousand people watching her in prime time. So they tried truth for a change. They actually talked about the FBI sorry record of investigating itself. 150 times they've done investigations of shootings by the FBI and 150 times they've exonerated themselves. But especially with the shooting of Ibrahim Todeshev, who was picked up. He was a friend of the alleged Boston bomber. They picked him up. He told everybody, they're going to kill me. He gets shot six times and once in the back of the head, execution style. And of course, that's now been found as justified by the FBI agents. But where she will not go is she will not look at the full events of the Boston bombing, because that would bring up this false flag, which the media is deathly afraid of. Take a look at this report from Chris Hayes. It is so rare us. when a politician just lets loose with absolutely justifiable profanity. This is a guy from MSNBC, looks just like Rachel Maddow, it's unbelievable. <laughs> the Second Amendment shall not be infringed, you people need to understand that. Yes, yeah. Dan Bedondi. yourself. After that clip got posted to the internet, RNC Communications Director Sean Spicer, who told us tonight that, quote, the idea of an elected official using language like that is unacceptable, plain and simple. Well, he tweeted out a link about it, a tweet that is still on his feed, which reads, whoa, Rhode Island State Senator, a gun rights supporter, go F yourself. Except Mr. Spicer really should have taken a moment before he sent out that link. Because you know who Rhode Island State Senator Joshua Miller was telling to F himself? He's this guy. Remember last Shows year Dan when press Badandi conferences about the horrible in his basement Boston doing his independent tragedy, radio show. Getting interrupted by a conspiracy theorist yelling about a false flag? <laughs> that was the same guy. Was you guys given any warning ahead of time of this uh, taking place? Why are you denying that there was bomb drills Monday morning? We got photographs on Infowars.com, folks. Why are we allowed speakers telling people in the audience to be calm moments before the bomb went off? Is this another false flag stage attack to take our civil liberties and put more homeland security by sticking their hands down on the pants on the streets? No. His name is Dan Bedondi. He's a reporter for the Alex Jones conspiracy theory website InfoWars. Conspiracy theory and website. To State Senator Miller, who has now apologized for his words out of respect for the decorum of the State House and his constituents. <laughs> Not only is Bedondi known for his aggressive and intimidating manner, he had reportedly been antagonizing an elderly veteran before confronting Miller. Well, that's not Later true. that day, police had to physically remove him from the committee room. In fact, Bedondi himself posted the moments leading up to that ejection when he wouldn't stop talking after his allotted time. This woman is standing up and pointing at him saying, leave the room, leave the room. She doesn't want to hear what Dan there has to say. There is something sort of clarifying when that guy, when Infowars and the RNC are the one-two punch defending the Second Amendment. Yeah, you know, he says that's justifiable to say F you to Dan when he asks him a question about the constitutionality of their laws. That's what it comes to. And of course, he dismisses InfoWars as being this internet conspiracy site. Really? It's got more news than MSNBC, and it's got a lot more followers. Take a look at some of these numbers. Uh, pull up there, guys, the uh, YouTube channel that MSNBC has. They've, they've been up since 2011, and they've got 142,000 views. InfoWars has got 371 million since 2007. They, they're dying. Nobody's paying attention to them because it's false. It's phony, like these reports about what happened in Turkey. Alex is going to be joining us to talk about this MSNBC hit piece and about the phony mainstream media. So stay tuned. Paul Joseph Watson is with us, and he's going to be talking about it as well. Stay tuned. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. In the last 50 years, iodine has been phased out of our staple foods and replaced with the halogen bromine, a practice now banned in nations around the world. Guess what else is in the halogen family? Fluoride. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here. In 1924, the federal government did the right thing and encouraged salt producers to add iodine. It's the good halogen on the periodic table. And the results are on record, reports documented, a 15-point IQ increase in areas that had previously been deficient in iodine. 
Bottom line, iodine is important. Unbound, clean, in a glycerin base. Nascent iodine was the answer for myself and my family. You will find Survival Shield Nascent Iodine exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWars Life Survival Shield Nascent Iodine isn't just for emergencies. I take it every day. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139.